So, what is up guys, I am 63Z, and this isn't a video I'd usually make. I was just on YouTube yesterday, before I went to work, and there's been a lot about the new release, or not the new release, the speculated new release title of the new COD, which a UK magazine article said they possibly think it could be Ghost 2, which meant that a lot of people are getting a bit freaked out. I didn't mind Ghost, I just, I don't know, there was something about it that I didn't like. I liked the guns, I, I, I didn't really enjoy the maps all too much, but it felt pretty good. It, it felt really, really good. I didn't mind the colours of the map because um, most of the CODs are usually fairly dark. More until recently, um, but that led me to watching someone's video which actually led me to watching White Boy 7th Street's video. And I heard a bit about White Boy 7th Street. I, um, one, a couple of my friends used to watch him a while ago when he did that. It doesn't matter what your name is. You gypsy, you gypsy, you suck bad, the dick, dick. What's your name, man? You're talking all that shit. You're talking all that shit. What's your name? What you got to say? Well, like, my name it is doesn't you. matter what your name is. So I watched his video on COD then versus now. I'm sorry if I sound tired. I only woke up about... Oh, okay. Half ago. I ended up watching his video about COD then versus COD now. Why do I have me what? I'm just trying to make the video. Um, and I had the picture of this up. Um, part of it, and then also the thumbnail of the actual video. And it's basically saying that COD then was a guy in a ghillie suit looking freaking awesome versus COD now, which was a gingerbread guy from Advanced Warfare. And then COD then. But the map was a map called Bog, and it was like tanks and really world warish. Not even world warish, but like just really warish. You knew it was a war zone because of the like the look of the map. Even just the colours of the map made it look like a war zone. And then the COD now is the DLC from Black Ops 3 that I haven't even gotten yet because I'm an Xbox One player, uh, which is I believe was the Water Park one. And you can just tell the difference between the two because Advanced Warfare was definitely way too futuristic and then these maps that are coming out since well Black Ops 2 had a fair bit of bright maps uh, that was probably the first one in my mind that brought out a lot of brightly colored maps his video was basically about talking about his points of views on it uh, everything that he think he could fix and some parts that he actually put in I ended up commenting on that and it I, I started to go on a little bit of a rant. I only meant to write like a couple of lines, but I only just kept going and going and going. I'll read out the only parts that actually need to be there. I'll put up the, I'll put up a screenshot of what I actually wrote. I copied and pasted it and put it into my notes section, so that's why it's not actually in the YouTube comment spot. Um, it's just a note section screenshot. So there it is. If you want to pause and read it all, go for it. If not, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to read the first two paragraphs of it, which was. Watch this and so many of its points make sense, but if all you do is get shit on, you won't want to play, man. You can't only make it for the good players, you've got to give people a chance. I hate the specialists and crap that, they're given, that gets given to you easily, but some, something like what they did in Modern Warfare 3 for the support score streaks, which is a really good idea, you still have to work for it, but yeah. The support score streaks was decent as you get rewarded for trying, but still had to try. And then the next part was, I don't like some of his points, as it's just a bit of, as it's just a selfish point to make. It's just to make it better for himself. I agree to the casual community, but not just YouTubers, but everyone including the snipers and competitive community. Just, you can't let their opinions control at all. Change is what we wanted, but a lot of pop, a lot of, well, a lot of people wanted, but not necessarily the futuristic. Here, they're trying to make a space themed one next, like Call of Duty Beyond Earth kind of thing. Um, and something like ha the Halo Master Chief Collection, or an old style, or an old style game, I mean, yeah, I was just um, talking to the, to, to the thing. Um, something like a Halo Master Chief Collection, or an old style game, and all this, yes, a Halo Master Chief Collection would be good for the COD, well, would be good for COD, combining serves and remastering them all under one roof. But it's just a quick fix. There's nothing more putting it off. Like, and there's nothing more than putting it off until the next year. Um, then I said, like, my first, second, and third favourites is Modern Warfare 2 was my favourite. Modern Warfare 3 was the second. Black Ops 2 was the third. Because that was 
probably the second one I actually really got into, and then COD 4. I know COD 4 was pretty good, but I never really got into it, because by the time I started to play it, I, it was long gone, like it was four or five, it was three or four CODs behind the main one now. So whenever I tried to play it, it was just always laggy, or there might have been someone hacking, or there just wasn't enough people playing, so I couldn't find the game, and all that kind of stuff. Black Ops 2 got me really interested because it was, there's a lot to do, and I just wanted to do it all. I actually got all the guns done within like the first month. I got to Prestige Master within the first two months, um, and I did like 98% of the challenges. Modern Warfare 3 was probably when I first started to properly get into it, like, I played Modern Warfare 2 for a while, and that was the first game I'd actually gotten. I got it a couple months after it came out, on the year it came out, because I had gotten it for Christmas with a, um, a Modern Warfare 2 themed Xbox, if you haven't seen it already, um, for the Task Force. And I had played it for a while, but it was a matter of, you know, I didn't really have the Xbox Live to play, so I only ended up playing with my brother. So for about four or five months of having it, we didn't play that often. Then after a while, I found out you could play online, and then play online, you need an Xbox Live membership. So I got an Xbox Live membership, and I probably enjoyed it for the next three or four months, um, up until the new COD was released, which I believe was Black Ops 1, which was, in my mind, a big disappointment. I know I have a poster of it right there, but I only really liked Black Ops 1 for the zombies. Um, I just want to have a poster of every COD. I, I wanted one, for, I have one for Ghost, I have one for Black Ops 2, I have one for Modern Warfare 2, I have Black Ops, I have Advanced Warfare, I want uh, Modern Warfare 3, COD 4, World at War, Black Ops 3, and yeah. I need a couple more still. So Modern Warfare 3 was probably the one that I first started to play, which was really, really good, and I loved the gun sounds, it was a great, well-rounded game for me. A lot of other people would disagree. It could not get any better than Modern Warfare 3. Black Ops 2 couldn't beat it. None of these other games have beaten Modern Warfare 3 except for Modern Warfare 2. The main reason my Modern Warfare 2 is in front of Modern Warfare 3 because not only did I love the maps in Modern Warfare 2, like 10 out of 10 loved them, the guns just sounded amazing in it. The, it was well done. It was a big high point for what COD was. And although I'm not saying we should just copy what Modern Warfare 2 is, we need to go back. We need to step backwards to go forward. Because <laughs> a lot of what White Boy 7th Street was saying was that, you know, you don't cater to a younger audience. And yes, that is very, very true. I don't think we should be catering to a younger audience, because especially because the game is either 16 plus or 18 plus. I don't know any of them are now are 18 plus, but they're all been 16 plus. I think we they should be 18 plus and we should cater for 18 plus. If anyone below that plays it, then so be it. If any parents don't like it, then they can't get it for their kids. Because 18 plus, you, the parents have to physically buy it for them. Um, so if the parents don't want them playing it, then they can't play it. And all that kind of stuff. Yes, it's gone down for the market, like for a lot of the younger generation who wants to play it even more because it's a cool thing to do. It's fun to play. Um, all that kind of stuff, but we can't cater to the younger audience, but we can't only cater to just big YouTubers, because he's counting himself as the casual players, and yes, he's a casual player, but he's saying the one percenters are the snipers and the competitive, but he's a part of the, the like, five percenters. The fi if he and a whole bunch of other people like himself were to be in charge of creating the COD, it would be so unbalanced, and it would be that far out of whack that no one would want to play it, because it'd only be good for those who can actually play good. People like to play it casually, and those casual players would have a better say in what goes in it than someone who's played all the CODs. Just because someone who's played all the CODs knows what they like, that doesn't mean that someone who hasn't played the CODs doesn't know what they like. You know, when I first started playing COD, I'd only just i only just started to play it and I knew what I had wanted to see in it. I had I had knew I wanted like next COD, I wanted these kind of kill streaks and I want these kind of guns. I want I want this to be able to be done. Like when Modern Warfare 2, I saw these videos about people putting up Modern Warfare 2, I'm like, why the fuck can't I do it? How are they doing this? And then I just let it be and Black Ops 1, the theater mode came in, I'm like, oh this must have been how they did it. How did I not 
had I not realised this is how they did it. So I went back to Modern Warfare 2 to tr try and find a theatre mode, but it wasn't in there. And it's a matter of all these things, it's like, if he was to do it, he would make it unbalanced. But I did like the fact that he's put in, because he was a, apparently a big uh, influence in putting the MX Garand, the Master 16, and the crossbows in for the Black Ops 3 DLC. Now, it's something I really have, have been wanting to use, um, but I do not have them. I wish I could have the crossbows, because I'd just use them as a primary, um, and just direct pictures, because I love, I love crossbows, and I've been wanting to use it since. But I don't like the idea of micro microtransactions in, in a COD. It just feels like they're trying to get the most money out of it as possible, like with CSGO. Like, Crypto Keys was fine, it was perfectly fine. But to have to buy the Crypto Keys so you can get another edge on everyone else, it was a bit too far. Having to buy the Crypto Keys makes it easier for those lazy people to do it faster. Um, the only reason why I really liked Black Ops 1 was for the zombies, and I get why a lot of people didn't like Ghost, and I get why a lot of people liked Black Ops 1, and I get why a lot of people didn't like Black Ops 1. And the way COD could improve is to step backwards. Taking a step backwards from what's been happening to realise what people are saying is what needs to happen. A lot of people would only listen to those they can hear, like people who are YouTubers. People who are, who are YouTubers like Fame and Apex, Nade Shot, Hex, Revenant, Scarce, and White Boy 7th Street, Arlie They all would only listen to the big people because that's the only ones that they really care about. They think that they have the best ideas because they're up so high. I'm technically a YouTuber, I only have 37 subscribers. But what I like in a game is balance. You can't cater to people who are really, really shit. People who are brand new to the game, you can't cater for them. You can't cater for the really young audience. Anywhere below 16, you should not even worry about catering for. Because they technically shouldn't even be playing the game. 16 to 18, yeah. Don't cater to them, but hear them out. Hear their, like, what they want in the game. 18 and up, cater towards those. People who aren't brand new to the game, but even those people who aren't good at the game. You can't cater for the younger audience. You gotta cater from 18 and up. People who aren't new to the game, but aren't sh people who aren't new to the game, but are that could be still shit at the game. People who are good at the game, as well as some people who are average at the game. Because if you make it for those who are good at the game, it will be unbalanced. If you make it for those that are easy in the game, it will be un it you won't want to play it. If you make it for those that are in the middle, it's just boring. You gotta have a balance. You gotta make it. Some things are easy for people to get when they're shit, so they can get better. You gotta make it for some people who are good to give them a challenge. You gotta make it good for those people who are casual, so they can try and push for the better stuff, but they don't have to try to at least have fun. Score streaks wise, Modern Warfare 3 was a good idea for score streaks. Although a lot of people didn't like it, it gave you a variety. You, you could be really good at the game and get the best score streaks you could by going with the assault score streaks, which is the normal one where if you get a kill, if you get five kills, you get a score, score streak, but if you die, you lose those five. With support, you get five kills, you can get a, a score streak, but if you die, you keep those five in there, and if you, you just keep getting up and up and up as you go on, but as soon as you get that one, you have to wait till you finish them to get it again. So it can take a while, and unless you're really good at the game, it's it's not there's not really any point of using support if you're more than just a casual player. S specialist was good if you're casual, if you wanted to be challenging towards yourself, if you just wanted to have fun, if you were shit because it meant you could get extra things that would help you play without having to get score streaks that might interfere with how many people you kill. Although I don't agree with the overpoweredness of some of the support score streaks, like the advanced UAV. That should have been up higher in the list, as well as a couple other things. I think that it should have taken more kills to get what you got in the support skills kill streaks than in Modern Warfare 3. Some of them was a little bit too easy, but that's what made it so easy. That's what made it so good for people who did play that were new, but not shit. Hmm? Okay. Now a lot of people are saying that they're just pumping a new cut out every year for the money of it, and yes, that is true because you're working for the money. Um, but they now have three um, game creators. Before, it was only two, but that still meant it took two years to create a game. Um, 
so they did take more than a year to make it, but it's just the fact that there was two, it was oscillating years. Now there's three, it's three years to make a game, which gives them more chance to keep updating the one that they previously released while working on a new one. Which is kind of good in the, in the matter of the fact, but if, as soon as that first year goes, you probably shouldn't worry about upgrading, uh, updating your games anymore. After that first year, your DLC won't come out anymore. That first, the DLCs go out in the first year. Updating the game probably halfway through to the next COD, then stop. To go back means not necessarily to go back in time to World War II. To go back doesn't mean to necessarily go back to Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. To go back doesn't mean to go back to those graphics. To go back is to think of what it was like to make COD back then. What were you aiming for then? You were aiming for a war zone. You were aiming for what felt like you were in the fight. You were aiming for something the area looked like it had been war torn. It had looked like it was a battle zone. It wasn't always the most colourful scene, but it would still look beautiful in a way. Like, there was on the maps, um, Estate. I remember that from Modern Warfare 2. Estate was a good map for this. Like, it looked like a war zone, but in certain parts of the map, it would still look beautiful. Like, it still looked like a good place. But you knew it was a war zone because of just the way it looked. Now, probably it's not the best example because it is like a freaking woodhouse mansion or some shit like that. That's probably the best one I can think of off the top of my head. Um, to go back to something that felt like a war zone, to go back to something that was an original but still not like everything else. Guns, not all real life guns sound bassy or they sound full or they sound amazing like what a lot of people think but then that's a whole part of creating the game you've got to make sure the guns that are meant to have that bassy sound have that bassy sound guns that sound flat sound flat some that have a twang give it a twang some that just sound different to others give them that different sound but don't make the whole game one sound because that's what ruined it for me on Black Ops 1 the gun sounds were great. The maps, not as much. The the graphics on it, again, it wasn't that good for me either, but I get why some people liked the game. I know I'm rambling on now, probably gone on for about 20 minutes or something like this. might be a longer video than I thought. To go forward with what you're doing, you've had that many ideas, you've had that many games. What is it, COD 1, COD 2, COD 3, COD 4? Um, that's 12 games. That is a lot of ideas. That is a lot of concepts that are hard to come up with. You can't drag it out forever. You can't make you can't suckle it for as long as you possibly can. But if you're going to do it, if you're gonna keep the game going for as long as you can make it, don't start to change what you're known for. Halo, it's kept to its base standard. It's a war between humans and aliens. They've thrown in some new enemies. It is still between humans and aliens. Battlefield, it's kept itself as a war zone. A fully destructible war zone. COD, it was always known as a war zone. Not fully destructible, but a war zone. It wasn't meant to be the most real thing, but it was realer than, say, Mortal Kombat. If you wanted to play for realism, you'd play um, Battlefield. If you wanted to play for somewhat realism and for the fun of it, as of you can do what you want without having a serious consequence where you didn't have to wait for so long to be able to play, it was a constant action, you would play COD. If you wanted something that was generally difficult to play and hard, like easy to play, hard to master, you would generally go Halo because it always had those outer area concepts because that's where it was made for, that's what it was made to do. COD's gone to the point where it's trying to be something it's not. Titanfall has probably had a big impact on what COD is. So has Battlefield and so has Destiny and so has Halo probably. They've taken little pe bits and pieces from all these kind of games like, yes, wall running is a cool idea for COD, but for the distance that you can do it, no. 
in real life you wouldn't be able to wall run for longer than what two meters it'd be a useless game mechanic but it is still something that's more real than being able to run across a whole building it worked for titanfall because that's what it was set for cod has tried to go out of its boundaries and push its limits and has really just failed. What I what I would think you could do to improve is take a step back. Look at what it meant to play COD when it first came out. Play the old CODs. Play the first COD up until Modern Warfare 3. Play them all from then till then. Play all the campaigns. Play the multiplayers. Play with as many guns as you possibly can. Make a list of what you liked about those games and incorporate it into what could be your next game. I would think to have a good COD you need a really captivating campaign. For me, you don't play the multiplayer until you play the whole campaign. I haven't finished a campaign since... Well, since Black Ops 2. I didn't finish the Ghost campaign. I probably should have. I wanted to, but I just didn't. I didn't finish the Advanced Warfare campaign. I didn't finish Advanced Warfare. I, did, I certainly haven't finished Black Ops 3 because the stories aren't captivating. Yes, the old campaigns are fairly predictable. Don't make them predictable. Make them think what people think will, will happen and then turn it back on them by making them think that something else will happen that they think would happen but then make it what they think would happen in the end. So it's a double turn on. You know, for a lot of people, you don't play the multiplayer until you play that campaign. But if you, if you don't have a good campaign, I can guarantee you, a lot of people aren't going to like the game. A lot of people like only play games for their campaign, because they don't like to play multiplayer. Because a lot of the time, it's pretty crap for a lot of people. I like multiplayer because I like being able to play with my friends. But if I don't like a game's campaign, I'll most likely not like their multiplayer. It's as simple as that. You can have a cool secondary mode like Modern Warfare 3 had survival, um, Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 had zombies. I didn't like Black Ops 2 zombies because they went a bit far out there, but it was still fairly decent. I like the standard idea of surviving with the team, and although Black Ops 3 kind of pulled it back to that, it's still too technical. I, I'm, I'm going to say what White Boy did. If you gave me a team of developers, uh, say 10 or 15, something like that, you give me as much time as these other companies have had, I guarantee I could make a game that a lot of people would prefer over Black Ops 3 or Ghost or Advanced Warfare. I could probably make something that some a lot of people would like over Pod 4 or Modern Warfare 3 or Black Ops 2. Wouldn't be too sure, but I could definitely try. For me, the one percenters are the big YouTubers. The sniping community, which isn't a big community. We don't I'm I technically would be a part of the sniping community. I, I love having a good sniper to use, but that doesn't make it a bad thing to have a good sniper to use in the game. The competitive community is another one. They like it to be purely based on how the competitive works. Having a good game means you'll have a good competition. Having a good competition means the competitive mode and competitive tournaments will be good because it's what you want to play, it's what you like to play, and it's what people will want to see. The five percenters are the big YouTubers, the sniping community, the competitive community. All of those. Those are my five percenters. They should be listened to, but not controlled by. Listen to those who normally would play. The small, small people that don't get seen much, don't get heard much, like myself, um, and a whole bunch of people that just don't put themselves out there on YouTube. People that don't put themselves out on social media like that. Find a way to get people's opinions that don't usually get heard. Getting their opinions will give you a much better idea of what you want in a game than the big people. Yes, they've played a lot of the games, yes, they've played probably all of the games, but that doesn't mean they know more than other people. You could play one COD and still have more of a say, still have the same say and it be just as valid as someone who's played all of the CODs. It's just as valid. I don't want to see a, a, a World War II. I don't want to see fighting terrorists like Modern Warfare 2 was, because it's already been done. <clears throat> I don't want to see fighting Russians after certain events, like the Cold War, which was what COD 4 was. And I don't want to see the stuff that's been done before. I want certain aspects, like if they're a terrorist group, okay. But don't make them just a standard 
terrorists that you would see in a game like CSGO or like Modern Warfare 2. Like the whole Afghani stuff. Make it different. Make it something you wouldn't usually see. It's slow but high adrenaline. Something that kind of copies what Rainbow Six is, but isn't Rainbow Six. Having something that has a steep learning curve for those people that want to play really competitively and is only good to those who are really good at the game. And then have the normal stuff like team deathmatch. But don't have too many game modes because then it restricts how many people are in each one. If you have less people in each one but a shit ton of game modes, you're not going to find a game easily. A lot of people won't get to play the ones that they want, and they'll be stuck playing ones that they don't want, which will make them not want to play the game even more. Stick to the basics. Team Deathmatch, Free For All, Domination, Demolition, Search and Destroy, Hardcore, or Hardcore modes of those, of those exact ones. Having too many game modes will make it harder to find a game. If there's a lot of people playing, but there's a shit ton of playlists that you can play from, you're not going to find a lot of people on each one. It's going to be a hard game to find, it will usually be fairly laggy, and be hard to deal with. Kill Confirm is another good one. So, basically to wrap up my huge, huge rant, I agree with a lot of stuff that Whiteboy7 said. I still think a lot of his points were selfish to make it better for himself, because he's sick of what COD is, and only wants it to be better for him, not for everyone else. I think it was a bit selfish on a lot of his points, but I get why he's saying it. I think that making a game for the whole 100%, not the five percenters, not the one percenters, but the whole 100 percent. Listening to everyone that will give an opinion. A lot of people will give an opinion, but they don't always have a way to give it. So, let's take a step back from what you're doing. Think of what it was to create a COD back then. What ideas, what COD was. What made a COD then? Why was it well? Why, why did it do well? Why was it good? What did it mean to make the COD then? You'll come up with a better COD than any of the ones you've got now. So I guarantee you, Black Ops 3 won't last to the end of this year. It really won't. Advanced Warfare stopped lasting after four months. Ghost, about the same. Black Ops 2 lasted over two years. Modern Warfare 3, about a, you basically captivated people for a whole goddamn year. Black Ops 1, probably about the same, maybe a bit less. But then again, I live in South Australia, so I'm not with Americans. So it's harder for me to find a game than it would be for them. Modern Warfare 2, shit, that lasted many years. It's still going now. COD 4, it is still going now. But not a lot of people play it. It lasted a good year and a half, two years. Easy. Easy. The original games are not short, because I, you know, I wasn't really around for that. To take a step back and think of what a game was then, to think what it meant to make that game, is why you need to make a game. If you can't think of what it meant, or what it means to make a game, if you aren't passionate about the idea that you're making, if you're thinking that, okay, well, we can we'll do the campaign later, we'll focus mainly on the multiplayer, we'll make sure multiplayer is incredible, and you're not putting as much effort into the multiplayer, then it's not going to be a good game. If you only focus on campaign, it's not going to be a good multiplayer, and it's not going to be a good game. If you only focus on the side games, it's not going to be a good multiplayer, it's not going to be a good campaign, it's not going to be a good game. You need to focus on everything. Now they have three years to make a game. They can truly focus on every aspect. Each year you can develop each part. There's no reason for a bad campaign anymore. There is no reason. Making a good campaign, making a good multiplayer, is all anyone could ever want. If you aren't passionate about the game that you're making, don't make it. If you're just making it purely for sales and adding microtransactions like buying crypto keys, buying supply drops, don't make it. Supply drops is not a good idea. It's okay for those people who want that little bit extra, but adding in micro microtransactions on top of supply drops is not a good idea. Doing the challenges for those camos are a lot better and a lot more a lot more funner to do for variants and shit like that. Give people challenges that they know they can try and do to get them. So they have to unlock certain ones before they go to the next one. It makes it harder, but it makes it so everyone can do it. If you aren't going to focus on every aspect of your game and give the campaign a loving, huge motherly hug to smother into your bosom, don't make a campaign. If you're not going to 
give it a huge motherly hug into your bosom for the multiplayer. Don't make a multiplayer. If you're not going to give it a big smothering hug into your bosom for side modes like zombies or survival, don't make them. Don't waste your time and don't waste your consumer's time. We don't want a game that will only have us playing it for a couple months. We don't want a game that we only like one aspect of it because everyone else is doing it. We want to play a game for all of its pieces. We don't want to... I know so many people that just haven't touched a campaign in years because they're just not even going to bother with it because of how bad they've been getting. Heck, even on Halo it can get a bit bad. I know I didn't like Halo 4's campaign. I really didn't. The point is you've got to make it for everyone. If you're only listening to those five percenters, you're not going to have a good game. If you're only going to make it so it's for the good people, people that play it on a regular basis, like every day, it's not going to be fun for those that play. For those that want to play and are playing every three or four days or once a week or all that kind of stuff, they're not going to have fun when they get shit on all the time. Spawning into a game with an AC-130 going over your head, constantly killing you at your spawn, that ain't fun. Just because some people want to get a 103 game using mostly just score streaks is not going to be a fun game. Score streaks is another thing. I mean, yes, not everyone gets kills, but it encourages camping in a way. Camping is a legitimate tactic, I know, but in games, like, if you're playing Battlefield, camping is fine because it is a realistic thing. COD now is known for running and gunning, running in there, running into the zone, and then dying after like four or five kills plus. If you're lucky, encourage people to move. Encourage people to communicate with their team. Don't make it easy for them to want to just not have a headset in. Don't make it easy for them to just talk to their friends online. Make it so they want to be playing with their friends that are online with them in the same game so they can all communicate. I'm going on way too long. I should have stopped like 20 minutes ago. Don't make a campaign too long. Don't make it 20 hours to play. Don't make a campaign only a couple of hours to play. You've got to find that balance. For me, a 12-hour campaign is beautiful. You have to sink a certain amount of time into it, but it's rewarding because not everyone will be like, oh, I can do a whole 12 hours. But you'll feel so much better knowing that I can do that and I know more than they did at that point in time. I'm making a game that I am passionate about, that I want to make. I've got the whole, I've basically got a whole game planned out, ready for me to code, ready for me to make but I can't do it yet. I wish I could do it, I wish I could do all these animations, I wish I could make the game, but I am in process of being able to make it. Now granted, my game now has uh, one that's already been announced, which is a lot I like it. If anyone's had the game For Honor, that is ba that's a game that was like what I had thought of. I thought of my game back at the end of 12, 2012, 2013, which is probably maybe around the time that he started thinking of his. Maybe a bit earlier? Who knows? I'm not going to say they copied me because I haven't even put it out there until like this past year. I, I'm not I'm not copying them. I've had this idea for years. The point is that it's a game that I want to make and if they do For Honor, by the time I get my game out, I can know what I can improve on in my game. I know what I want to do already, but I'm passionate about what I want to do and I'm sure I can make it a great game. If you're not sure you can make your game great for everyone, for every aspect, don't waste your time. Thank you guys for watching, this has been my rant that was huge, a huge rant, I'm very sorry. Thank you guys for watching, this has been the 63Z on how can COD be better, how can COD do better next, what can COD do next, all that kind of shit, all those kind of titles, I'm always in response to White Boy 7th Street, but in a way not, so thank you guys for watching the video. If you agree with anything I have said, if you disagree with anything I've said, if you have any points to add on to what I've said, leave them down below in the comment section. Tweet me on Twitter at 63Z. XXX63Z, sorry. If you liked the video, leave that like. If you dislike the video, then you can leave a dislike. Tell me why you disliked it in the comments, but you know, leave a dislike because it means you don't agree with something I've said. Tell me what you don't agree with. You know, that's fine.
But if you liked it, leave a like. I hope you all enjoyed. Sorry, this was a huge rant. And I will see you all in the next video. Guys, I'm back. That was probably a very short few, but it's probably been another.